never be embarrassed if you don't know exactly where the book is. I, I remember when I first had received Christ as my Savior, my pastor would say, now I'll turn to this book, whatever book it may be, let's say the book of John. And I'd take my Bible and I'd flip through it just like this. But I finally got to John. I didn't want to think, you know, let him know I didn't know where it was. And, I, and if I would have just gone to the index, I would have got there like five minutes quicker. And so never be embarrassed. Just so thankful that we have the Word of God. And you yeah. want to see it with your own eyes. So the book of Habakkuk. And it is really a privilege to be here today. Uh, Pastor Goodell spent a lot of time with me, helped me to understand the Word of God. So I can teach the Word of God. So what a blessing he is to our family and our church. And so this church here has been a blessing to us as well. And so thank you for the privilege of letting me be here today. Let's go ahead and pray, would you please? Heavenly Father, we come before you in Jesus' holy name. Thank you for the privilege that we have to gather together. So we ask for your Holy Spirit, would you please allow your Holy Spirit, Lord, to take your holy word and that we may understand it today, that we can apply it to our heart and to our lives. Thank you for saving my soul. And Lord, we just need you this morning. Of course, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. The book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk. So, can you hear me back there pretty good? I don't want to blast you out. Sometimes I get a little excited. And so I just want to warn you in that area, okay? So, so the thought this morning, for, so Lord willing, in the evenings, we'll come back, except not this evening, but the following Sunday evenings, and uh, going to try to go through the book of Habakkuk. And as we go through it, I, I really believe the Lord had laid this on my heart a couple months ago, a few months ago. And so I really have learned a lot as I've gone through the book. And you're going to be amazed, truly, as we see what's taking place in our nation today and how truly the book of Habakkuk really can go hand in hand with what we're seeing today. So, so may God truly use this to help us have a great understanding. So Habakkuk, his name means to embrace or to wrestle. And in this book, what he does now, he does both. He embraces and he wrestles. He wrestles with God concerning the problem of how a holy God could use a wicked nation like Babylon in order to chasten the people of Judah. Habakkuk also wrestles with the spiritual decline of the nation and why God wasn't doing something about it. And so when you think about this today, have you ever been to a place in your life? Truly now, think about this where you've wondered about something to the place that it even brought you to this, to worry. You, you wonder, you wonder, you wonder, and through that wonder, it brings you to a place now where now you're just, even as a believer in Jesus Christ, even though you're not supposed to, right? The Bible says, be anxious for nothing. But yet, we, we still have human flesh. We're not home yet. And, and, and the wonder that takes place Gets us to a place now where now we begin to worry when actually what we're supposed to do, by the way, is surrender to his will. Mm. And as we look and see that's what's taking place in our nation, we can really wonder, hey, God, Heavenly Father, do you see what's taking place? Now, we know he sees everything. We know he sees what's going on right here in this nation. But yet that wonder, as it did Habakkuk, by the way caused him to worry. And for you and I, if we're not careful, as we begin to wonder what's really taking place all around us, it can bring about that worry when what we should be doing, by the way, as believers in Jesus Christ, surrendering to his will. So have you ever wondered why it appears God isn't doing something about something you'd like to see done? Mm -hmm. Sure you have, right? Hey, you, you've wondered, hey, God, why haven't you done something about something that you'd like to see done? Habakkuk wanted to see the people of Judah revived. But God was not answering his prayers. Have you ever felt this way? You feel like God is now silent and not answering your prayers. You ever been there honestly now? Now we have, right? Where, where we can't help but wonder, God, why are you silent this year? I desperately need to know this. I, I, I'm seeking you, Lord. And yet, he appears to be silent. So by faith, what Habakkuk did now, he, he embraced God and he was clinging to God's promises. So even when he seemed silent, what he, he embraced God, 
said, God, I, I trust you. I'm a little confused about what's going on. But yet I, I'm still going to embrace you, Lord. And I'm going to cling to your promises. Look 1 through 11, would you please? Wondering and worrying. The burden which Habakkuk, the prophet, did see. And, and we're going to come back to that in a moment, that verse 1. But it's very important here. The burden which Habakkuk, the prophet, did see. Oh, Lord, how long shall I cry? And then he repeats it, and shall, will not hear, even cry out. And, he, and there's a big emphasis there. Where, where he's crying out with a question to the fact. Now he's screaming out to a holy God. Unto the of violence. And thou wilt not save. Why dost thou show me iniquity and cause me to behold grievance? For spoiling and violence are before me. Think about what's taking place in our nation. All the violence that's going on in our nation, by the way. And there are that rise of strife and contention. Therefore, the law is slapped and judgment doth never go forth. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous. Therefore, wrong judgment proceedeth. Behold, ye among the heathen, and regard and wonder marvelously. For I will work, look what he says, I will work a work in your days. You know what's so amazing about this book as I read? Hey, listen, this book can go from generation to generation to generation. And hey, we can see all that's taking place again. Right here in nation, you'll be amazed as we begin to go through this book. I'll come back and say, wow. I mean, I mean, we are experiencing those things right here today in this nation and in this world. Verse 6, for lo, I raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation, which shall march through the breadth of the land to possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. They are terrible and dreadful. Their judgment and their dignity shall proceed of themselves. Their horses also are swifter than the leopards and are more fierce than the e evening wolves. And their horsemen shall spread themselves and their horsemen shall come from far they shall fly as the eagle that has it to eat they shall come all for violence their faces shall sup up as the east wind and they shall gather the captivity as the sand and they shall scoff at the kings and the princes shall be a scorn unto them they shall deride every stronghold for they shall heap dust and take it then shall his mind change and he shall pass over and offend imputing this his power unto his God. Wondering and worrying. Have you ever wondered this now? Why do bad things happen to good people? Mm -hmm. Or why do good things happen to bad people? Or how about this? When I'm serving the Lord, why do I have to suffer so? You, you know, you serve the Lord and then all of a sudden you, you go through those times of suffering and you wonder even to the place where it will cause worry. When actually, as believers, we should do what? Surrender to his will. One time, Susan and I had, we had the privilege of going to a conference up in the mountains of Maine, about five hours away. And, and I had to preach in a weekend, I think, I don't know how many times, a few times, several times. And, and a, a, a couple, another couple came up with us. And this guy is an electrician. He, he, he can do it all, literally. So he went up with us, and the whole time what he did now was he worked on this retreat center. I got to preach, and he literally, he was running around the entire time, each day, doing everything he possibly could for this retreat center. And then we're leaving that Sunday evening, five-hour trip, heading back home in bad weather. And we're going home, and as we're going home, you see, you got to understand something. Next day is Monday, and it starts all over again. And, and here, he, he served the entire weekend. And he was leading the way, and we we're following him. We should have been the leader, by the way. And next thing you know, we're going to flow of traffic. Can you guess what happens? <laughs> wee, 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 wee. And, and all, all the people. Now, truly, what happened was the speed was going from 40, and all of a sudden it goes right on the 25, one of those crazy things that had to take place. And he's just going to flow of traffic. And we're behind him just far enough. Then all of a sudden he gets pulled over. And, and here now he's served and you think, why in the world this possibly happened to me? All, all I'm doing is following everybody in this line. And next thing you know, I get pulled out. And, and, you know, and that can really cause discouragement in somebody when they serve and serve and serve. But just think about that. That's something really tiny. But what about the individual that gives their heart to the Lord? 
and serves and serves and serves, but then has to go through nothing but suffering. Don't they wonder why? Why? Dear God, why? And now here he is, Habakkuk, wondering, hey, God, are you really concerned about what was taking place in this nation? How about this? Why doesn't God answer my prayers? These are all very real things that can cause us to wonder and worry, even though as believers we're not told to do, we're, we're not to do. As Habakkuk watched what was going on all around him, what he did now is this, ladies and gentlemen. He took it to the Lord. So, so as he wondered and he began to worry, in wisdom, he takes what's taken causing that worry in his life and he brings it unto the Lord. You know what we do today? We bring it to social media, right? We put it on Facebook. We put it on Instagram. We put it on TikTok. Whoever it is, we just put it all over the place, right? So sad to say, when, when what he did in wisdom was he brought it before the Lord. He, the burden in verse 1, which Habakkuk the prophet did see. So, so the prophet characterizes his inspired message from the Lord as both, listen, a burden and a vision. It was something that he felt and something he saw. Oh, have you ever carried a burden before? What are, we, what are we supposed to do with that burden? We're to cast that burden upon the Lord. But here he was. This burden was so heavy. He, he's crying out. He's screaming out to God. And he could see what was going to take place. The word translated burden simply means to lift up. And it was often used. Now listen to this. It was often used to describe prophetic messages that would announce, by the way, judgment. So why is the book of Habakkuk so important as we look at it today? This is why. I, I really believe that we're at a place at the crossroads in history in America where God is bringing his judgment to this nation. That's right. and, and so as we, as we wonder, truly, now think about this, as we wonder, as we see all that's taking place in our nation, and we begin to even worry, that's why it's so important that we come to the place that we surrender to his will. So here Habakkuk was ministering during the final days. He was ministering during the final days before the nation of Judah was conquered by the Babylonians. Do you know that we here in America are truly ripe for a takeover? Yeah. Matter of fact, Ladies and gentlemen, it could actually already be happening as you see what's taking place in this nation. But you know what happens? We're, we're so blind. We're, we're just so cold and different, calloused. And yet, we're just kind of like, hey, whatever. When truly, things that are taking place in our nation right now could be the very fact that, hey, there is a takeover that has taken place in this nation. And we don't, we're just kind of falling asleep to it. A friend of mine who retired from the military, and I was a military guy, I am pro-military, just for the record. He said, you know what was so sad? He said, the new recruits that are coming through are so undisciplined. They have no respect for anybody in authority. Do you know what's, what that means all day for our military? Trouble. <laughs> I wonder, and even worry, are we living in the final days before this nation, by the way, is conquered by another nation? You see, because we've gotten the fact that, hey, we're just superpowers. Hey, hey we're so mighty. We're all these things. And we have left out the very key ingredient, God Almighty, That's right. in this nation. <clears throat> we have been rotting, by the way, from the inside out. God had repeat. listen to this, God had repeatedly called Judah to repentance, but the people refused to change from their sinful ways. And I wonder, and I worry so sad to say, as a holy God, through the various circumstances that we have been through as a nation, that God has been calling us to repent, or judgment is coming. You, you know, these things that take place, whether they're the crazy tornadoes or the hurricanes or, or the flash flooding or the storms or all the things that have taken 9-11, all these things that have taken place. Do you understand something? 
God has allowed them to happen. And, and a lot of times God's purpose in those things that happen is to say, hey, wake up. We need to get our eyes back focused on God Almighty. We need to turn our lives back to God. We need to have that change. And he was calling for those people of Judah to change. And they just wouldn't change. God says, okay. Whom the Lord loves, he chastens. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while, ladies and gentlemen, God's going to bring us to the woodshed. Mm -hmm. And here was taking place. In this nation, God loves this nation. God loves these people in Judah. But God says, okay, enough is enough. There's going to come a time, and I, and I, I can't help but think it's already happened, ladies and gentlemen, that God has said, okay, America, I love you. As a matter of fact, you may sing the songs, God bless America. God has, by the way, blessed America. We, we say, God, you bless us. Listen, God has been blessing us. But there comes a time when God says, okay, hey, you know what? The blessing's gone and the correction's coming. And even in the correction, by the way, is a blessing that God is saying, hey, I love you. Yeah. I, I'm trying to draw you back to myself. And we say, oh, no, I kind of like it the way, the way it is, God. And that's how it was. Hey, Habakkuk, why is God so indifferent? So three things. Let, let's see the cause. Let's see the concern, the cause, and then God is going to give him some counsel. Verses 2 and 3 again. He's saying, why is God so indifferent? You know what he's saying? God, why is it when I look and I see these people need to be revived, he, he's calling out God in a sense saying, God, why are you so unconcerned? Do you know, we've been praying for revival. I pray that God would revive his people once again. And that's what Habakkuk wanted. You ever wonder why at times it seems, and I want to understand, emphasize that word, it seems that God is unconcerned. God is so concerned. He loves you. He's concerned about everything that's taken place in your life. But sometimes we do. We question God. God, why do you appear to be so unconcerned? Habakkuk knew the kingdom of Judah was deteriorating because, this is why, get this now. They were deteriorating because the new king was leading the nation to disaster. Let that sink in for a second. Mm -hmm. The new king was leading the nation to disaster. I got to make that any clear? Yeah. If I do, I'll, I'll say it right as I want to say it. I'm trying to choose my words carefully because my wife says I ought to do that every once in a while. <laughs> my mother used to say, Kevin, you got nothing to say? You know what she'd say? Hey, if you got nothing kind to say, don't say nothing at all. <laughs> Boy, that's tough for me. So anyways... <laughs> This new leader, he's leading them to disaster. Mm -hmm. He forgot, by the way, how his father Josiah led. His attitude was such, he was going to lead the kingdom of Judah the way that he wanted to. In class, you've always stuck this in my head, everything rises and falls on leadership. Everything rises and falls on leadership. Habakkuk was concerned because times were difficult and dangerous. Listen to the words he uses. Violence. Have you seen violence like this ever in America? I mean, think about it. I mean, you think about this. You, you can go to a sporting event and you're sure to find somebody fist fighting in the stands. You, you can go to the supermarket, and you can find somebody, guess what? Fist fight in the supermarket. Violence is everywhere you're around now. How about, how about, um, I saw a while back now, this woman that has owned a store from generation to generation to generation. And now here she is, higher up in her age, I can't even guess how old she was, let's say 70s. They're loading her, trying to loot her store. And she's standing in front of her store. And some young thugs just beat her up. Mm -hmm. Here, 
in America. Hey, there's all kinds of people around, but you know what they do? They, they videotape it. And they let her get beat up. Violence, iniquity, and moral wickedness. Misery, destruction. When, when people just decide they're going to burn up people's cars or their places of business or their homes. Strife, disputes, Habakkuk prayed the situation in Judah, but God did not seem to hear his prayer. Difficulties as you watch gas prices just rising. You go to the supermarket and the cost of supplies there are rising. You try to build something, the cost of lumber is rising. Uh, dangerous times, like I said, looting, rioting, killing. The violence is everywhere. Cry means to call for help. He called out to God for help. And then he cried out means to scream with a heavy heart. So as Habakkuk prayed about the wickedness in the land, he became more and more burdened and even wondered, God, why are you so unconcerned about this? Lord, Lord, when you see all this taking place in this nation, you know what I believe? That this nation, by the way, is founded on godly principles. And as it's founded on godly principles, it, it is so sad when you see people no longer want to have be led by godly principles. Of course, God sees what's taking place there so many years ago. And he sees and knows what's going on right here in American Concern. But there's also a cause in verse 4 to the concern. He says, Therefore, the law is slack, and judgment doth never go forth. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous, therefore wrong judgment proceeded. You see, when the law is not obeyed, you have anarchy. The nation's problems were caused by leaders who would not obey God's law. Do you know when we have a leader that's in the Oval Office, if he rejects God's will, if he rejects God's word, if he rejects God's ways, and he won't be obedient to God's law, this nation, by the way, is in trouble. Yes. Matter of fact, every nation's in trouble. And when the law is not obeyed, you have anarchy, and justice never prevails. In America, what are they calling out for? Defund the police. Can you imagine that? Hey, defund the police. <clears throat> we need to make sure that the men and women in blue know that we care about them. Amen. Mm -hmm. Know that we pray for them. Hey, I'm not saying everyone is perfect, by the way, because I know they're not. But just because there's a few that aren't very good doesn't mean they all are. And I don't believe that this nation should defund the police. Because you think things are bad now? <laughs> We've already stifled police officers from doing their duty to protect us. But to, defend, do, to defund the police would allow the wickedness in America to take over, by the way, completely. Another thing that they had problem with was this, the cause. The rich took advantage of the poor. Oh, that ain't no different, is it? <laughs> the rich took advantage of the poor and got away with it by bribing the officials. Now, this happened back in Habakkuk today. Look at the parallel here, ladies and gentlemen. It's no different today. The law was ignored and nobody seemed to care. The courts were crooked because... Those in charge only cared about money. Look at our politicians. Go to Exodus chapter 23, would you please? Exodus chapter 23. Verses 6 through 8 reads, Thou shalt not rest the judgment of the poor in his cause. Keep thee far from a false matter. And the innocent and righteous slay thou not, for I'll not justify the wicked. And thou shalt take no gift, for the gift blindeth the wise and perverteth the words of the righteous. 
The scripture which King Josiah practiced when he was a leader became ignored when his son Jehoiakim succeeded him. So you got the concern, the cause for his concern, and now verses 5 through 11, you're going to see God's counsel. God's counsel. And I want you to understand something. That counsel has not changed today. Look at verse 5, would you please? Behold, ye among the heathen, and regard and wonder marvelously, for I will work a work in your days, which you will not believe, but be told you. When we wonder and even worry, as we begin to surrender to God's will, we'll see that God is doing a work. Instead of being instead, instead of saying, God, are you concerned? No. All of a sudden now, after we come to the place of surrendering to his will, now, now we'll see that God is doing a work. Do you know, it doesn't matter who you voted for as president, although I think it's important that you vote, and you ought to vote according to how, you know, what, what you believe in godly principles. I really do. I think it's our responsibility. But at the end of the day, regardless of people saying it was a crooked election or whatever, none of that matters. You know why? Because God allowed the person to be in office that is in office. It's that simple. God allows and he places with a purpose the, per the person in office. Do you know that the president we have right now in the United States of America, God has allowed him to put him in there for a purpose. Mm -hmm. I love how it's so quiet right now. <laughs> I hope our wheels are turning. I pray for our president that God will save his soul. The past president, I pray that God would save his soul. You know why? Because we need somebody in office, truly, that is born again, that believes the Bible is still true, and will take it and apply it to our lives as a nation, that'll call out to a holy God and, and beg him for mercy upon this nation. Mm -hmm. God answered Habakkuk and reassured him that he was at work even though Habakkuk could not see it. So even though we can't see that God is at work, God, ladies and gentlemen, is at work. We must realize and be reassured even though God, even though God may seem silent, he is at work. God gave Habakkuk a revelation, not an explanation. Hmm. We don't need explanations, ladies and gentlemen. Right here we have God's full, complete revelation. What we need in times of wonder and worry is a new perspective of who God is. Remember, God is God, and he does not owe us any explanations, period. But he does reveal himself and his work to we who seek him. What God was doing, Habakkuk would not believe. Even if God sat him down and said, Habakkuk, this is what I'm going to do. God was planning to punish the Jews by using the godless Babylonians. They were ruthless, dreaded people who were feared and afraid of nobody. Their only purpose was to promote themselves and conquer and enslave other people. The Babylonians had no respect for authority, whether kings or generals. They worshiped the false god of power and depended wholly on their own strength. And the Lord, and it doesn't make any sense, does it? And the Lord is going to use them to chasten the Jews. Do you imagine what the Lord may use to correct we here believers in this nation? Hey, it ought to really cause us to say, oh, Lord, wait a minute here. I'm concerned about my nation. Matter of fact, I'm so concerned that I'm going to stand in a gap and pray for our leaders and our nation. Lord, we, we've got to understand the cause that, that we have kicked God out of our public school systems many years ago. And then when something crazy takes place in the school system, guess who they blame? God. The very one that said, I don't want you here anymore. Hey, in our court systems, who do we kick out? God. And then all of a sudden we wonder what's the matter well, with all the wickedness in the court systems. Mm -hmm. And then we look at this nation. We said, God, hey, 
We're doing so good, we don't even need you any longer. And that's where we become. We become a proud, proud people that need to come to the place and say, God, I was wrong. <laughs> Lord, we need you. This nation needs him more than ever. Yes. Habakkuk, he begged God, God, please revive, revive us once again. Lord, don't go ahead and chase us. Don't use these wicked, wicked people. God says, enough is enough. No, they, they, they need to be brought to the woodshed. Mm -hmm. America, by the way, is overdue mm -hmm. to be brought to the woodshed. And, and I don't want to be a part of it. You know what, growing up, I never let it be corrected. But you know something? I was so glad to where it brought me from, that correction, to where it brought me to. Habakkuk learned that God is concerned. Whom the Lord loves, he chastens. And Judah was going to be corrected for their sins. Habakkuk was not looking for correction for the people by being taken over. He had hope for revival to take place in the people instead. And we have prayed and prayed and prayed for revival. And it just seems like it's not happening. You know what happens? Something crazy takes place. And it shakes us up real good. And all of a sudden we get our knees before a holy God. And we begin to confess. And we begin to get things right. And then all of a sudden we fall right back in the old trap again a week or two later. We make this, we make this profession. We, we, we get to the place where we say, hey, Lord, Lord, yeah, Lord, you're right. I need help. And then all of a sudden, you just slowly just drift right back to where we once were. You see, because of, if revival took place, you know what happened? They would escape the punishment. And the people in the cities would be pardoned. God had warned his people over and over, but they would not listen. Prophet after prophet had declared God's word only for the people to reject it. You know, you know what the problem is? I heard somebody say this, and I agree with them. They said, you know what's the problem in America? is pastors and pulpits mm -hmm. that no longer preach the word of God. That, that they preach whatever makes them feel good to get, make sure the church is full. To, to make sure their ears are tickled. Because that's what the people are looking for. Hey, I want to feel good, fuzzy, and warm all over the place when I leave that place. Don't you? And, and so all of a sudden the pastor began to change their convictions. Because they're more cared about the offering and how many are sitting in the pews than they are about their very soul. Mm -hmm. And the most precious part about you, ladies and gentlemen, is your soul. Mm -hmm. Not your feelings. <laughs> your soul. But pastors have decided they'd rather have New buildings and big churches. Then they have a right standing before a holy God. Mm. And God has warned his people over and over. A lot of churches get no warnings today. You know why? Because warnings might not bring you back. <laughs> a warning might say, Well, I don't like I like that very much. I, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go find some place where, where I can get that warm, fuzzy feeling all over. God has set natural disasters to get their attention, to turn back to God, but they hardened their hearts and looked to other gods they made up for themselves. God had been patient with them, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. They would not, so God had to act, and they were going to be taken over by a more wicked people than they. Mm. As I see what's taking place here in America, I wonder how long will God be patient with us? Or is he all done being patient? I worry that America, ladies and gentlemen, what I understand, and please correct me if I'm wrong, in this Bible you don't find America. Is it because the America that you know will be no more? Hey, you look back, the very America that you grew up in is no more. Mm -hmm. 
I believe that God loves America. I believe that God has blessed America greatly. And I do believe America has forgot about this, God's word. Mm -hmm. America has forgot about God's ways. America has forgot about God's will. We have told God by our actions, we don't need or want you. And we've cried out to God, and God seems silent. But then again, it seems like the only time we talk to him is to blame him for our problems. Hmm. America is not in trouble. America has been in trouble. And God has been patient with us. But there comes a time when God says, enough is enough. Are we, like the prophet Habakkuk, concerned about this nation? At Truthful, I, I asked our people, I said, I know you park strategically. So when I'm done preaching, you can say your goodbyes and get out and get to where you got to go on time. I said, I understand that. I feel like we, we live on this busy schedules over and over. Just, just live by these schedules. And I said, but even though you park strategically to get out of here, would you just wait a little bit? Would you allow now the Holy Spirit of God to personally speak to you as we've taken his holy word and shared it? To, to just to, to sit back and think, God, am I really concerned about my neighbor, about my family member? Am I concerned about this nation? I'm mad at my president, you may say, but are you concerned about his very soul? Were you, were you, were you be diligent to pray for his soul? to be praying for his leadership, because God has commanded us, by the way, to pray for our president, regardless of whether or not you like him, but to pray for him. Do we really know the cause of our concern? Do we really understand that, that we as a nation have chosen to disobey God's word? We've chosen to disobey God's ways. We've chosen to disobey God's will. The Lord's counsel, by the way, has not changed. He's calling for believers at this very moment in the crossroad of history. He's saying, believer, are you concerned? Do you know the cause? And then it gets real personal. Dear child of mine, are you part of the cause? Hmm. Have you taken my word for granted? Have you taken my ways for granted? Have you taken my will for your life for granted? Hmm. He says, return back to me fully and not half-heartedly. We're going to be in half hearted at stuff. But God, in this day and age of the crossroad in this history, is looking for people to truly, wholly turn back to Him. Mm. If we want to change in America, the change must begin in us. If judgment's not already here on America, ladies and gentlemen, it's just on the horizon. And Habakkuk's theme is this, the just shall live by faith. We have hope, and I'll tell you why we have hope. God rules over the whole earth and uses whomever he chooses for his purpose. So if somebody, wicked nation, some wicked group comes in and takes over America, 
And, and, and you said, Kevin, you, well, you know, here you are. You said, I'm wondering. I'm even worrying. But I'm supposed to surrender to his will. How do I surrender to his will in that area? That's a great question. Sunday evenings, Lord willing, we're going to continue the book of Habakkuk. Let's figure out what Habakkuk did. How he learned to come to the place to surrender to God's will, even in that wonder and that time of worry. Hmm. Surrendering to God's will. Oh, the book is wonderful. I'm so thankful for God's holy word. But before we leave, would you just wait a moment? Bow your heads. Just take a moment and allow God's Holy Spirit, as He's already taken His Holy Word, and allow Him to speak to you personally. Allow Him to speak to you personally. Maybe you just got to tell me, Lord, thank you for loving me, and, and I love you, dear Lord. In this busy day, have you even taken time to thank him today for something? Take time to say thank you. But this nation needs you as a child of God to be concerned and accept God's counsel don't be part of that cause. Don't be part of that cause to be concerned. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for your holy word. And we do ask, Lord, would you help us here in this nation? We do pray for our president. We lift him up to you. Please save his soul, dear Lord. Would you please change what's taking place in this nation? Lord, may we be drawn back to you. May each believer in America have a heart change. One that will together be concerned about this nation, Lord, and seek your counsel. And Lord, if you choose a judge's station, you can do anything you want because you are a righteous God. Help us to just do as Habakkuk had said, the just shall live by faith. So thank you, dear Lord. I do pray for these, this dear church. I ask for your blessings upon this church. Help them to just stay firm on your holy word and not wavering to the ways of the world. Lord, it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.